A little fog today, but that's all right. It's good to be back now that the world is at least partially unchained. And time to make an enormous mess in the main saloon. By descending into the engine bay and ripping out all the hoses and the heat exchanger, which was clogged with two extinct zincs, and putting all new hoses on. The old ones do make a satisfying pile. Install the rebuilt heat exchanger. And then while we're at it, why not work on the cockpit instrument panel to turn the instruments upside down for better visibility and to cut out the troublesome trailer connectors. And to finally rise and gasp for air once again. Now the helmsman can actually see the instruments. And sailing again, we can try to make the wheel pilot work at its best by balancing the sails. Mainsail lofts, it relieves the driving to windward force. The wheel pile is doing fine. In fact, the boat's been sailing itself for two minutes now without any pilot at all, which means that we've achieved <coughs> the correct balance of the helm. Now, on a day sail, you can sail with a little loft in your mainsail if you only have a mile to go. But if we were going a long distance like this, we would have found the correct balance point for the yacht, and all we would do is put in one reef, probably, that would uh, reduce the main sail, sail area enough so the wheel pile would have no problem sailing us all day, even though it's a little tiny product not intended for heavy air use. knots over the deck with almost no chop. We're going about five and a half or six knots. And the fog is dissipating, I think. My feeling about casual single-handing is that it's casual. We're not trying to win any races. And of course, single-handing is also defined as being the only one on the boat. We have guests aboard who's really experienced with the yacht systems or they'd be the only one who really knows how to sail a uh, auxiliary sailboat. So uh, in that sense we're single-handing all the time. And I put on a, my safety harness and stay clipped in when outside the cockpit when I'm offshore. If my general rule is if 
if I can walk or swim to shore, as in the channel or in the uh, harbor itself, I don't feel obliged to put on the safety harness. But here, one mile offshore, uh, it's necessary if you want to uh, come home to stay with your boat should something go wrong. So is this pleasant or what? It's just a Thursday afternoon in the middle of a, a disturbing time. And the boat does need to be exercised, just like a horse. <laughs> Some of the other dangers of casual single-handed sailing are falling through the main hatch, which I've almost done a couple of times over the years. Forgetting that the boat's a moving platform and that it's one hand for you and one hand for the ship. I'm glad to have that dinghy back on board. It feels naked without it, really. I put a couple of coats of bright side on it during the virus hiatus. These port pram, it's not really good for much. It's fun to sail, especially if you're 14 and weigh 90 pounds. It only takes two people with a dog, not too big a dog. And I used it as a lifeboat once on a Hawaii trip. I put a whole bunch of expanding foam in it and covered it over with plywood and put safety lines around the gunnels. It gave me a tremendous amount of confidence that if the boat sank, uh, I'd be able to row a thousand miles home. I think the greatest danger in casual single-handing is something from aviation. Airplane pilots talk about getting behind the airplane, meaning uh, an airplane's moving 200 miles an hour. You only have a few minutes to decide what to do next, but things are certainly different on a sailboat. I like to keep about a day ahead of the boat whenever possible. Right now we're about an hour from harbor and I'm already anticipating how to come into the slip, whether the engine will start or not. And right now, although it's a bucolic afternoon in casual single handing, I'm still 10 or 15 minutes ahead of the boat. I find that I keep looking forward to see other craft. There's nobody out here, but if you go below, let's say, to the head whilst sailing along, just this amount of time, a prudent fear of collision enters the single-hander's mind. And he sticks his head up. Well, I don't want to overstate the dangers or challenges of uh, casual single-handing. It's really not that hard. I think all that's required is to have a working knowledge of the systems on your boat and after you leave the dock to ask a series of questions. What if, what if, what if, what if? It's actually much easier to, to learn something and develop your skills alone, I think, without a crew, who after all take up some of the atmosphere. Alone, you can ask yourself why the winch tends to work so much better under these conditions with four turns around the drum than with two turns. You can. If you stumble, you can ask yourself, why did I stumble there? I must have the wrong handhold in mind. You can build the muscle memory through practice necessary to be comfortable on your own boat without anybody watching. Casual, single-handed, not a bad idea. And the only thing that's important in the end is to make sure that we stay ahead of the boat.